Hi everyone, Dr. Henry from Pain Free and Fit and Posture Size. Today, great exercise for those of you with degenerative disc disease in the neck or cervical spine. We're going to be talking about how the rotator cuff muscles are an important part of your self rehab. Hope you enjoy. So, those of you with degenerative disc disease may be wondering. What does the rotator cuff of the shoulder have to do with my neck and my pain from degenerative disc disease? Well, here's the connection. If you've taken any of our videos before on our channel, you know that shoulder mechanics and shoulder posture, whether the shoulder rounds, whether the shoulder tips, whether the shoulder abducts, downward rotates, shoulder posture habitually can pull on the muscles that run from your shoulder blade into your neck. That's the connection. Your rhomboid muscles, your trapezius muscles, levator scapular muscles, they all attach into the neck. And chronic postural issues, because they're abnormal, are going to create an abnormal tugging and pulling. And over time, that tugging and pulling irritates the joints. It creates muscular trigger points. It creates joint fixations. It irritates the degenerative herniated and bulging discs in your neck. So a number of our videos have addressed rounded shoulders and elevated shoulders. We're going to talk today about the value of the rotator cuff. Now, the rotator cuff, four little muscles that surround the shoulder blade and help hold the arm in the socket. But the connection is that the fascia or the envelope, the webbing that connects muscles and organs and bones and everything in our body, the connection from the infra and supraspinatus, which is part of our rotator cuff, connects to the rhomboid muscles, which then connect to the neck. So chronic postural problems such as rounded shoulder, you need more exercise than just say reverse flies or rows that pull your shoulder blade back. You need to be exercising in many cases, the external rotators and the supraspinatus of the rotator cuff because for many people with cervical degenerative disc disease, rounded shoulders are also associated with internal rotation, meaning that the arm, when you keep the shoulder in a neutral position, doesn't have the palm facing in. The arm or the upper arm has the point of the elbow out. That's from doing things more internally with our arms rather than externally more during the day. Over time, that asymmetry of motion builds up into tightness and strength of the internal rotators with subsequent weakness of those external rotators. So today, we're going to be learning how to exercise those external rotators to help with the scapula position and with the fascial pull that goes in to our neck, aggravating cervical degenerative herniated and bulging discs. Before you do this exercise or any exercise, remember, check out your body mechanics, learn what they are. In my body, I'm going to have to emphasize external rotation more on the left side because I internally rotate more on my left than my right side. I also have a tendency to have that left shoulder move forward or anterior glide in the socket. I don't know if that's you. You could have an anterior glide, a superior glide, a problem with external or internal rotation, ab or adduction. You need to check out what your unique mechanics are so you can plug those reverse motions that you need that are weak into your rehabilitative exercises. You only know that if you do an analysis on your body. If you're not sure, check out the painfree and fitapostasize.com websites. We've got a free body analysis. Learn what your unique mechanics are, not only of your shoulder blade, but also of your shoulder joint, because you want to plug those corrections in. Without that, and just generically doing external rotation exercises, if you don't have your shoulder blade and your humerus of your upper arm bone set in the socket correctly, you're going to be increasing the strength of that abnormal position or that abnormal movement which over time is just going to strengthen the dysfunctional pull back into your neck and aggravate things. So let's do things the right way. Remember, we want to strengthen and condition proper function, not dysfunction. With that being said, I'm going to set my shoulder blade up into a neutral position, which means it's not rounded, it's not elevated, it's not tipped, it's not abducted or downward rotated, it's in a good position. If I have a problem with my upper arm, such as an anterior glide, I'm going to pull that arm bone back into the socket, it's a little eighth of an inch motion. That's not moving my shoulder black blade back more because it's already set, I'm just tensing the arm back in the socket. As I do that, I'm gonna externally rotate. My elbows stay where they are, and I'm gonna move outwards with dumbbells. Now I can do this with my elbows close to my side, which is no degree of abduction. And as I move my elbows out, the exercise is gonna get harder. If I have a stability problem with my lower back and I have a tendency to swing backwards, I can use a split stance with one leg back That'll give me a little more support while I'm doing this. And as you can see, I'm working abduction and my infraspinatus and external rotation with this exercise. The whole time I'm protecting my neck by making sure it's not moving forward. I'm keeping my face pulled back towards the back of my head and my chin down as I do this. 
I'm careful not to have my elbows too far back. I'll lose, it's one of the ways we cheat with this exercise. We bring our elbows back, it drives the shoulder forward in the socket. I want to keep my elbows at my side or actually a little forward. That creates a lot more stress on my rotator cuff and makes this a much more challenging exercise. I have the option also of using a band with this, if I'd like, in a standing position, where I set myself up in the same way, same shoulder corrections, and I externally rotate. Again, you can change the angles. The whole time my elbow is an L with this. You'll notice I'm not changing the angle at the elbow. The only thing that's changing is the distance that my elbow comes from my side with these. And again, I'm keeping my elbow slightly forward, not cheating coming back. I have the option also of doing this prone, which really helps to lock the posture out so I can't cheat and sway my body. Lying face down, taking those same bells, locking in good position, and externally rotating. Again, distance of my elbow from my side will help me. I'm emphasizing with all those my unique posture corrections. If I have a tendency to internally rotate more on one side, that's the side I'm going to try to pull out further than the other side to emphasize those corrections uniquely for my body. If you have any questions or comments, write in. I'll be delighted to answer them. Give me a thumbs up below so we can share this valuable information with others. And again, if you're looking for a great program to analyze your body mechanics of not only your neck, your shoulder blade, your entire musculoskeletal system and how it relates to your cervical degenerative disc disease pain, check out our neck healing program at the painfreeandfit.com website. It's got all the body analysis, stretches, strengthening exercises, stability exercises, how to get back into sports and working out sequentially, step by step so you don't hurt yourself. It's all there with good advice waiting for you. I hope this exercise program on rotator cuff external rotation helps you with your chronic cervical degenerative disc disease.